So this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door, and this is Paw Paw Gallimore. I was lucky enough to be invited here by his great, your great grandson, KG grandson, invited me up here to look for bullfrogs, and we just got to talking about bullfrogs. And I asked uh, Paw Paw here, uh, have you ever eaten bullfrogs? Yes, several, lots of times. Yes, we have. How do you catch bullfrogs to eat? Long in the evening, uh, when we get a uh, little get together, community, um, to have a jump in the river or in the pond or ride, we'd take a canoe and put them in the ponds and ride around them, and we would most of the time would shoot them. It was the easiest way. And uh, what, what did you shoot them with? Twenty-two. You have to shoot them, and then you have to get them before they go under. You have to you have to be ready, and uh, then when we go to the river. We just get out in the river and, and walk down the river, walk down the banks, and they, they, those days there was plenty of them. They would be a honking and a carrying on. And they'd be as big as your hand with a, a leg on them, as big as your thumb or more, and uh, it was very good eating, very de delicate, delicacy, like fish meters or. Uh, shrimp meat or something, it's just, uh, just real white and soft meat. If you got a bullfrog, how would you prepare it? Well, we'd, we'd, we'd have us a, a bucket or a container to pick them up and carry them out, and then we'd cut the legs off and uh, skin them and then cook them probably on a grill, just enough to get them done. It's just like a shrimp or a piece of fish. It doesn't just time you got it warmed all the way through, they was good, they was ready to eat. And, um, it was just something us old country boys did. We thought it was just a natural thing. We didn't know it was such a rarity. <laughs> we, uh, that's just the way we lived. And, and when we would have a weekend cookout, that's, we'd add that in and we would, um, rabbits were pretty plentiful then. You could ride down 810 there from eight down to the river and probably get you two or three young rabbits we'd skin them out and put them on the grill with little frog legs and and on occasion we would uh, uh, come up with a uh, mud turtle that uh, catch him uh, going out to lay eggs or something they going through the field or along the edge of little ponds and things and you get a Pretty good sized turtle, and that is very good meat, very good eating. It's, uh, it's a job to get into the good stuff. Yeah. It's hard to crack him open, hard to clean him, and they uh, they definitely come with their own perfume. And and uh, but uh, once you, they got uh, they say seven different flavors of meat in one of them like a beef and chicken and so on, and a turtle. It's just living off of the land, kindly. Well, one of the things I'm very interested in is, is what's happening to species today. So were there many more bullfrogs in the past than they are now? Yes, yes. I mean, um, I would contribute to uh, it's hard to say. I'd say, you know, normally you could walk around that pond like today, um, five years, ten years ago, and they would be a half a dozen or more full-size, full-grown bullfrogs. And they'd jumping in and a holler and a car and on, and the pond would be, sometimes would be nearly just a whole bunch of young ones with up from tadpole size with tails on them and on up would be in there, and uh, the quality of the water is uh, got to do a whole lot. This, um, I mean, my opinion, our, the air we breathe today is, is isn't very clean. It's since we've got rid of a few of the coal-fired um, electrical plants west of us. I think our air is a clearing up. I think our air is getting cleaner. I've been 
in the air flow to, from the west of us, which most of the time the air travels from the west to the east. And it's just, uh, it gets all up in the sky, and when it comes to a shower, it, it just almost falls in acid. It's yeah. just. So, so you bring up a really good point because amphibians have are very very sensitive to pollution. They're probably most sensitive of all organisms. So that makes bullfrogs, for example, an indicator species. They have to keep their skin very moist and it's very porous because they can actually breathe through their skin when they're in the water and when that skin is wet. So being so porous, they're ultra sensitive. So for me, it's kind of scary to hear about the decline in amphibian populations and hear this decline in bullfrogs here in your pond. And you say you're not an expert, but you have immense experience and you've lived close to the land and with the land. And, and so I think your voice carry, carries a lot when we're talking about that. If you, uh, if I'd had a camera on my head like you got there and I, I wouldn't have tried to remember this stuff, it'd be a whole lot different. I, there's uh, uh, water uh, processing places, uh, maybe in the past, not now, but would have uh, a uh, pond or something their water comes into before they use it with uh, uh, frogs or uh, fish or whatever in it. And as long as they could survive in that water, they was cons the water was considered pretty pure. But if, uh, if they hit some acid or some bad water, those things that they had to watch would they would die. They wouldn't. They wouldn't. Wouldn't make it. Cause there, our little river down here. When I was a young boy or a grown boy, younger man, uh, we'd grab a fishing pole, and go down, sit on the side of a little hole, and catch us uh, uh, horny heads and uh, red and a few red eyes and some uh, a, a smallmouth bass, uh, uh, different things, and the quality of the river it just don't hardly support nothing it uh, even you know the flow the the flow of that water is they they turn some trout loose and they'll live you know for a while till people catch them out but our uh, the old native fish we used to have these they just about the grump grampuses and uh, stuff like that they're not in there no more they your grandson was t telling me about hellbenders in the river. What's what? what? That's a grampus, I call it. Yeah. Uh, well, he. I don't know what these are called. Hellbenders. Okay. The big. The big right. Okay. Salamanders. Yeah. Yeah. We. Uh, <clears throat> it's been five years ago, I guess. I did see one down on the river. I think maybe it might have been dead then, but they. Uh, 14, 15 inches long, and their feet stuck out on the front of them like an alligator, and and uh, we would go fishing, and, and one of them get on their line, and you know how tails start. They'd say, well, you might as well throw that hook away because fish won't bite it after that alligator. After he bites it, they won't bite it. But uh, we used to, they was, you know, a reasonable amount of them, and they was, like I said, big, pretty good size, uh, water animal and uh but well thanks uh for your perspective here and and your experience and um it's been really interesting hearing about changes in amphibian populations and wildlife in, in your lifetime and also really interesting learning about how you lived and ate that wildlife and stuff too yeah. as, as part of your your everyday thing. I think you mentioned that, you know, today it seems like an unusual thing, but but back then it was just what you did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, thanks for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door. Uh, if you like what I do, please subscribe to my channel. This was a little bit different than what I usually did, and this was just kind of a spontaneous thing. I uh, met Mr. Gallimore here, Papa, and I thought it'd be really interesting to hear his perspective. So thanks so much for um, 
being on my channel today and yeah, sharing your experience and knowledge. It's a little surprise knowledge. to me and just uh, in the years past I can pick up maybe three or four black snakes and take them down there and throw them up in the barn and the last two years I hadn't seen one. Yeah. So, you know, I just did an episode about black snakes yeah. uh, and how they're great to have around your house and stuff. So it's really great to hear you say that. Just, uh, I mean, the thing of, of a young person getting to see one crawling through the grass, they don't realize what um, opportunity they're having because <laughs> maybe the last thing they ever get to see. The roads and the farm equipment, and it just, uh, it just take them. It yeah. just, <clears throat> old barn, you know, for barn swallows and you, they used to you always you go in there and look up and they'd be one hanging here or there or a skin and uh, I don't think I saw one last year at all in the barn 